I must confess, I do love thrifting, but I also like flipping those thrifts. So today we're gonna take the last things that I thrifted and we're gonna flip them and we're gonna make them amazing. Wait till you see what I did. Now flipping items doesn't have to be all paint and clay and all kinds of crazy stuff to make it work. This piece is a beautiful candle holder with the glass globe included and somebody had glued it on and I picked it up because I thought it was beautiful. The base is already black. It is flaking and chipped off a little bit here and there. So I'm just going to help it along and get some of those chips off, sand down some of the the uh, edges that are sticking up a little bit higher and just distressing it a little bit more than it already is. I don't think it needs paint at all. Except for <laughs> these little pieces here. They're just under the globe and uh, it, fl it flaked off. So I just took a little bit of black paint and not completely covered the spot because again, I'm distressing. But I wanted to kind of take away some of that uh, that brightness from that and add a little bit of black, but it doesn't have to be completely covered. So I just added a little bit of paint to that. Here's the real star of the show, a candle. Just a plain old candle. Now this is a wax LED flameless battery candle that I did purchase. This was not thrifted, but I have thrifted these in the past. Uh, this is a three by four candle, I believe. And I have my Mod Podge here. I'm just showing you. I have a separate little jug for my Mod Podge that I use when I grubby candles. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to grubby this candle. So I have my grubby mix, which is a mixture of coffee and cinnamon, allspice, cloves, uh, the ground cloves and whole cloves. And this is for... Um, the smell along with, uh, you know, different colors that I like to add in. I believe this one has um, some pumpkin spice in there too. And the coffee is an instant coffee. Uh, it, it reacts with whenever it gets wet, it, it kind of reacts a little bit quicker and turns a little bit browner when you get it wet. So I just took my Mod Podge and went all over the candle, I brush it on, and then I also dab a little bit with that Mod Podge uh, on these candles where they're wax. Sometimes I like to streak, and then when you put your uh, spice mix on there, it, it will leave lines in the candle, so it and it doesn't look very good. So I like to kind of sponge on some of the glue on top of where I had just brushed it on, and then it kind of uh, gives it a nice even look. So then I just did the top the same way, just dabbed it on there, and then just to be careful not to get it in that hole where the faux flame comes out of, I um, just added that mix. Now I do have several videos on this, and I'll link them down below so that you can check out how uh, I do this. I use candles, I use, I've done this on wood, plastic, uh, all kinds of things. So I'll have a few different uh, video links down in the description for you to check out if you're interested more in depth on these grubbying videos. So now I'm just sealing in my candle. I let this sit overnight. I like to let it sit and dry really well. That way the spices stick on there and uh, you don't have to keep going back and filling in the holes as much. So um, I like to let it I hate to because I'm very impatient but I like to let it dry and then I go back and just add a nice even coat of the Mod Podge all over it I dab it on and then I brush it gently you want to be careful because a lot of the spices will come off now this Pitberry ring I did thrift for two dollars and I, got, I believe it was Goodwill and now my candle is all dry. I let that dry overnight as well. Added a couple of batteries and here is the beautiful candle. This is the star of the show, I think. I think the these grubby candles are amazing and they're great for rustic primitive decor. I 
added a black and tan tie there and then I took out my pit berries and tried a little ring of greenery to see what that would look like. Right now I'm right into the greenery with the grubby candles and the black. I just think it looks so striking. It's uh, just beautiful looking to me. So I switched that out so you can see what that looks like as well. simple little wire basket that I thrifted. It looks like a bag and I just thought it was different and cute and I thought it would look great with some greenery in it. So I grabbed that up for a buck or two and I grabbed this roll of bees burlap. Uh, these are at Dollar Tree right now or they, they were as of just a few days ago. Uh, and so I grabbed that and it's a nice, fairly nice good piece of burlap and the bees are nice stamped on there. It looks really good, uh, good quality. So I thought maybe it would be cute to add this to the inside of my basket because you can see through it. And so I, what I did was I started to glue it to the inside of my basket. So I took the top of my material and some hot glue and I just glued that into the basket. Now, I don't think I show you the whole thing. I started to put it in and I actually put it in the wrong way. You actually need the uh, right sides in towards each other and I had it the opposite because when you tuck it in, that it's gonna make this nice little pocket where you're gonna be able to see the outside. If you have the same sided material, it's not gonna really matter much. Usually that's what I use. So this time I had to really think about how this bag was going to go in here or this material was going to go in here so this bag would look right and then uh, once I did get it in there I realized that the bees were upside down I thought they went in all different directions no they go in one direction and they were upside down but I still think it's cute you don't see a lot of it because the bees are so spread apart and uh, what I do with it after you don't see much of it so but I thought it was a nice little nod to the bees and to springtime by uh, adding that to it. So to make it a little bit tighter, I made, I grabbed a piece of uh, cardstock, thick cardstock, and I cut it down to the bottom, the size of the bottom of the little bag. Cut that down and put it right in the bottom. So it looks really good. It, it kind of pulls it tight so it stays open. Um, and that worked really well. I just slid it right in there. Now I'm taking some jute rope and I'm going around the edges. My edges didn't come out as clean as I wanted them to. So I'm just gonna go around my edges with the jute rope all around the top part of this and just give it a nice clean look. I added black and tan material to this and just tied a little knot in the front and trimmed it down. And I think this adds a nice touch to the front of this little basket. you saw my thrift haul recently I picked up this box it holds knives like steak knives and I just wanted to I had a vision that I wanted to turn this into so I decided to pick it up it cost me a couple dollars it wasn't very much but I wanted to take the inside out of it and man was this a challenge it's a velvety material and there was some particle board and everything was glued down really well. These must have been a nice set of steak knives. So uh, as you can see, I pulled out all the tools that I could find that I could uh, just get in underneath and just start pulling away at these uh, glued down pieces. I wanted to leave a little bit of this in here so you could see just how much of a challenge this is. If you pick up one of these boxes, I don't know what kind of glue they use, but man oh man, I mean, that was, 
that was a challenge. I was sweating by the end of it, I'll tell you. But I did, spoiler alert, I did get it all out. And I uh, took a razor blade and cleaned up all the edges that I couldn't get uh, with the heat gun or just by pulling out the material. So just a little bit of scraping. And then I also took my, once I did a bunch of that, I also took my sandpaper and just sanded it down a little bit. I will be painting the edges, so I'm not too, too worried about uh, too much of that, sh you know, color showing. So I have these knobs that I picked up at my uh, free area at my dump, and I wanted to put these on the bottom to lift this box up. I don't know what it is about these little boxes with feet on them, but I think it just raises them up to a new level. Haha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> so um, I just like how they just aren't sitting on the on the. Um, you know, on the table or on the wherever you put them. So um, I just added those with a couple screws. Then I'm going to go along and paint the inside edges of this. And don't worry about the middles. I'm going to show you what I do with those. First, I want to tell you about the collaboration that this is. It's the last thing thrifted, the spring edition. I love it. I love spring and I love all the colors and the uh, brightness that it brings. So there are six of us in this collaboration. There'll be a link in the description of the playlist. So if you want to check out the rest of the creators that joined in this collaboration, you definitely should. You'll find some inspiration for some spring decor and a lot of fun. I cut a couple pieces of black and tan material just the right size for the insides of my box to fit the middle. So I'm going to uh, glue, hot glue those in just by um, flipping over the, the edge so that I don't have any frays and I'm gonna glue those in so they have a nice uh, clean edge all around the inside you can see here I'm just gluing and flipping it around so that that's all cleaned up I didn't bother taking out the material on the inside uh, top the the blue piece there because it's still very nice and I just covered it with the material and you never know it's there now I'm going to focus on the outside of the box uh, now that the inside is all done and I'm going to take some off-white paint and do two coats on the very top of this box with the off-white paint. I'm going to be decoupaging a beautiful sunflower paper that I got from Zazzle on here and I'll be showing you in just a second what it looks like and I absolutely love it and couldn't wait to use it. It's so bright and cheery, and I thought it would fit perfectly on this box, which it just about does. I'll have my affiliate link to Zazzle down in the description if you want to check out what they have for paper and or get this paper. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I'm just taking some Mod Podge, and I'm going to decoupage it on the top. You've seen this a million times probably. And if you haven't, it's super simple. Just a nice even coat of Mod Podge and do small sections at a time and then lay your paper down where you want it and then spread it out. You will get some wrinkles. I don't mind the wrinkles. Some people do, but I don't mind the wrinkles. I want this to look old, aged, rustic, vintage, primitive, all of those words. So I... It doesn't bother me that there are some wrinkles there. I'm going to sand it a little bit anyways. We're going to use some wax on it, and it's going to come out amazing. Uh, so uh, once it dries, I, I do wait till it dries, and then I'm trimming off the excess of the paper and on both sides there. Now, on the ends, I didn't have to. It wasn't quite long enough to fit, but we're going to do something to cover that up so you won't even know that it didn't go all the way to the edge. Taking a little bit of sandpaper and just cleaning up the the end the edges and also again going over the top of my paper. Any of those wrinkles are gonna just get the tops taken right off them. And once we hit it with the black wax, it's going to look so aged. It's gonna make it look amazing. So I have this uh, Wilton 
mold for clay or I believe it's also for chocolates and things like that. I've been using it for clay and I bought it for the bird and the flowers and the leaves and all that. I was just showing you there. Um, but I also like these little edges and I thought this leaf one would look great on each end to cover up where the white is there and just give it a nice clean edge on the ends. I thought that would look really nice. And so I added the some clay to that and then just popped it out. Now I don't with these Wilton uh, molds, I don't use any cornstarch. It comes out amazing in uh, with these molds. And I don't know if it's because they're not so deep or what it is, but um, you don't need to use any cornstarch with these, or I haven't had to anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-paint these gently, very gently, because these are not dry. And I'm also going to pre-paint the edge of the, of the box uh, where I'm going to set these flowers so I don't have to work so hard to get the paint in the cracks to cover up that lighter paint that's under there. I'm adding a little bit of glue. This is just wood glue, uh, Gorilla Wood Glue, I believe, to the bottoms and then just adding those to the edges and what a difference that makes. It just gives it a nice finished look. So I'm going to do that to both ends. And then I have this Lock and Key IOD uh, mold and I made the, this, I'll show you right there, there you go. I made that one that I want to put on the front just to change up the front look of it a little bit. And I also painted that in the, this is the latte paint that I used on the leaves and on this. By the way, I don't think I mentioned that. It's just a khaki color, but it's beautiful. Uh, and now I'm going to paint my box. I'm gonna go all around the edges and I'm also gonna do the bottom and the feet. I did two coats of the latte paint all over the outside of the box. And now I'm going to take my Fusion Clear Wax and go all over the box, including the decoupage area. This is going to help me get, once I put my dark wax on, to get that back so that it doesn't get on there too thick. All I want is just a light darkening of my paint and some of my mold details. I just want them to pop a little bit more. And so now I'm adding the dark wax and then I'll wipe it back and it just comes out to a beautiful look. It also sits in those places that I sanded on top of the decoupage paper where I had wrinkles and I think it just gives it a nice aged look by doing that and I am so happy with this box. I hope you like it. I just think it came out amazing. I hope you like my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. I always love to know which one people gravitate to. And don't forget to check out the playlist. I'll have that down in the description and also any of the links that are down there for any of the products that I use today. You also can pick up my grubby candles on my Etsy shop. That'll be down in the description as well if you're looking to add to your primitive decor. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.